up tempo ga- gallop thing. Yeah. In what key? B's fine if you want to. It's Ben here, I'm joined by John today, and we're going to be checking out some of the fantastic new guitars from Chapman Guitars. Be sure to check out the timestamps below if there's anything specific you want to look at, but more importantly, please be sure to like and subscribe. Welcome back to Andertons. It's Ben here and I'm joined by the fantastic Mr. John Connon today. Hello, hello, hello. This is our first video together. This, this is, is, this is yes. a big moment. I think it got requested at least once in the comment section. <laughs> at least once. That's enough. That'll do. We saw um, it and rolled with it. Yeah, and here we are rolling with it. So, we're here with some brand new Chapman guitars. These aren't freshly new, they're kind of new, but new enough to do a video on, and we've got loads of them here. So um, talk us through what you've got over there. Ben, yeah, first. absolutely. So we're kind of looking at the more like the Pro Series models today. So anything sort of, you know, between £1,000 to £1,200, you can go and check on the Anderton's website for specific prices on that. What I've got in my hands right now, I've got the ML3 um, Pro Thinline model. Um, Lovely. It's worth pointing out that all of these are kitted out to the max with mm-hmm. all the specs all the great parts you would expect to find out of guitars in this price point coming yeah. out of a korean factory so let's say i've got the thin line equipped with just a seymour duncan p90 in the neck classic quarter pounder in the bridge for all your punchy goodness wilkinson bridge on this one as well what's interesting about this one which is what you don't get on a lot of them one two three four yeah Ooh. Ow. oof so we've got four-way switch on it so classic p90 in neck position all of that creamy buttery goodness already on great. that already great then if you go to the next position you've got it in parallel it's lovely then if you go into the next position series so again a little bit more chimey still lovely and then just classic quacky bridge sound on the quarter pounder yeah sounds great an excellent cool like little features on that like obviously we've got a semi hollow bit of class but this new finish as well it's yeah it's, i think the one of the most recent models it's, yeah that's pretty new that finish for, yeah. for the chapman range um it's coming on a few few others down the line it's but, like dark um, cherry metallic i absolutely love it yeah it's yeah. like a real royal burgundy with a bit of kind of metallicness to it up close um which is really cool you'll probably see that on the up close cameras as well as the um cylindrical inlays which are a nice little touch obviously quite a lot of chapmans don't have fret inlays so um and also reverse reverse headstock reverse reverse I can remember seeing the first prototype in that in the other room and they were like, can you notice a difference? And it, I couldn't clock it. And then once you see it, you're like, oh yeah, it is reverse reverse. We're just, you know, we're so used to the reverse headstock on, yeah. especially the ML3s, but um, really nice guitar that, yeah. And we should also mention today, we're playing through two quad cortexes um, for the sounds. We're gonna do a few different jams with, you know, clean, mid gain, high gain sounds. So you should hear the full breadth that these guitars can do, um, as well as the QC from the floor. Oof. Very, very hefty. So, this is the seven string Diego Cavallotti signature. Um, a very new Chapman. 
and it's probably fair to say this is the most premium seven string in the Chapman range. Um, a few of the specs on this. Should we go from top to bottom? Yeah, totally. Yeah. So. Um, Diego designed this headstock, so obviously it's a little bit different from everything else you would sort of expect on the Chapman line. It's got that kind of signature Lacuna coil um, logo on there as well. Flipping over to the other side, we have got, as we do on all of these models, um, hip shot locking tuners as well. Um, again, better tuning stability, great for restringing. You can also see roasted maple neck as well. Um, which on a guitar this price, but it's pretty common nowadays, yeah. but it, it looks great, feels really smooth as well. Going back over to the other side, we have got, as you would expect as well, ebony fingerboard. Um, what's kind of cool about this one as well, I hope the camera will pick it up, but you've got the red dot inlays as well, which just keeps in with this aesthetic yeah, on yeah. the guitar. Um, very metal. It's very, very Lacuna Coil-esque as well, if you look at the whole sort of stage setup of theirs as well. We've got a bit of a different top on this one yeah, as this well. Yeah, is, this is a black limber solid carved top. Sounds very fancy and looks very fancy. Yeah. Um, and it's got a real nice carve. If you look close and kind of see it up close, it's um, really nice and premium. I can see it perfectly in this little light that we've got. Um, but yes, as well as that, we've got Simon Duncan Distortion 7s. Um, obviously well equipped to deal with a seven string, all of that low low pitch that's going on. And as you heard, they sound great. What amp were you running out of curiosity on that model? Just a 5150 oh, okay. so, patch, yeah. yeah. Does the job, yeah. And yeah. you know, all the you know right things lining up sound great. We've also got volume and tone and yep. a five way on this. No push pull, but that's not very metal, is it? So we don't need it. No, um, <laughs> we don't do ambient here. No, exactly. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Any other sounds from that? Maybe like a clean, let's see how it cleans yeah, up. Yeah, absolutely bit of compression, reverb and chorus for all that glassy tone. So we'll actually start in the neck position. You can hear instantly how that sort of breaks up a yeah, little yeah. bit. They're really high output pickups. Position four, which again, if you're playing a seven string, you're probably gonna want those slightly glassier sounds anyway. Mm -hmm. I think it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> you can hear the output when you switch the, to the bridge. The bridge gets pretty parpy, doesn't it? But I, yeah. I kind of like a high output clean, which sounds very counterintuitive, but it sounds really compressed. Yeah. And I naturally slam compression on cleans anyway, and it kind of does it naturally. And obviously when you've got compression on it, it just makes it nice and tight. I think it sounds great on clean. Yeah. Um, sweet. All right. Next guitar. <laughs> There we go. Nice Oof. job. Blaze it. <laughs> Flipping it. Nice. We haven't even got to the Metal Jam yet. We had not no. <laughs> we go through it. Obviously very easy to play. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, what's cool about this, I mean, first off, the color. I mean, we've got a few here. I mean, I think, this, so we've got a blue one here, green there. There is also a black one as well, which I'm sure will get put up on the screen anyway. Um, the green is sick. Yeah, the it's green. edible greens, very yeah, like toffee. That was apple. called like Goblin yeah. Blood or something, which is apple certainly green. an appropriate name. Um, but right, so the Ghost Fret, it's finally made a return. Um, mm. To years and years of comments online, I think the guys at Chapman thought it's definitely the right time to yeah. bring it back, and they have certainly done it in style. To it's say great, the least. great guitar, great shape. Yeah. Um, very, like still unique, obviously a very archetypal shape. Archetypal, yeah. archetypal, whatever uh, shape. Um, but again. Premium features on a classic shape, that's kind of how Chapman's roll. Um, starting off with the headstock again, shall we? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So again, the classic ghost fret look on the headstock. As, like we said before, all of these still get the hip shot locking tuners, which is fantastic. Roasted maple neck as well. Um, flipping it back over. Ebony fingerboard again, slightly shorter scale length as you'd typically, you would expect to find on a guitar like this. So we've got um, 24 and 3 quarter inch on mm -hmm. the scale length of this. Um, so for someone like me who's used to playing stuff like Flying V's Explorers, it's, right. it feels a bit more like home, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. to say the least. The Infinity, the classic Chapman Infinity yep. logo as you'd find on the 12th fret here. Um, now where this guitar gets really cool in my opinion, it's actually a Carina body, so not mm. mahogany, which probably a lot of people would expect to find. So it does really give you that nice sort of top end spank on it as well. You know, it just sounds incredible. It's going to give yeah, you yeah. sustain for days as well. And like a good weight. It's like a yeah. quality weight. It's not too light, not too annoyingly heavy or anything. It's, it's a good solid weight. For a guitar that's kind of quite thin when you hold the body like it's obviously yeah. a massive shape but when you hold it it's like it's actually quite a small thing it balances um, really yeah, well it totally does that's a great way of putting it um and obviously you know traditional shapes like this are a bit more cumbersome around the neck this is a nice agreeable neck profile and a really nice joint around the back that just means you can get everywhere you want um what else have we got we've got a core split as well so you've got a three-way core split uh, again, Seymour Duncan pickups, we've got a Chapman string through hardtail, just solid, just yeah. absolutely solid. And you're going to hear uh, tones using a Duncan Alternative 8 in the bridge and a distortion in the neck, just for context. So, on the nice clean sound first, I'm going to start on the bridge actually. So, bridge pickup. Without chorus, sorry, I'm guilty of having chorus on literally everything. So now, without chorus. So it cleans up really nicely. Yeah. Um, again, relatively high output, so they still feel quite compressed, but um, they have that dynamic range, as you heard. So, position two, so this will be both of them. Super dynamic. Neck pickup. Super dynamic. Yeah. I keep, I, I want, I keep on wanting to play quietly on this. So now let's tap them. So back to neck. Tapped. Can't quite do the <laughs> almost country, but it's kind of just the wrong shape of that. Let's play something other than A, let's do E. Really fun on that. Still actually. really that bridge pack up is super honky. It's yeah, like, yeah. It's really nice. <laughs> Uh, I kind of want to drive it a bit just whilst we're here. Okay, back to clean. Right, 
Middle position, again, tap. There's gonna be super chimey, kind of telly-esque. Um, let's try the. That feels great. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, it's good fun. Then neck, single coil. Feels cool. That I just realised how badly it's clashing with these, but this is this is a nice green. This is a way nicer green. Um, I also, I just a note. I have quite long arms. And <laughs> I keep on finding I'm like pressing it this way just because of the the size of my like elbow or something. But um, people with smaller arms, I'm sure this would be great for them. Um, green or blue? I, ooh, I'm more of a blue guy. This I, is a great green. I would green. go green. I'd go green. Well, there we go. That's nice and average, isn't it? Do you know what I would Everyone love? likes everything. I would love to hear someone take this out on a function because actually when you're splitting it, it sounds so wicked great. and super yeah, versatile. Yeah, do the funk thing. With volume up. Let's put it in there. That, that one was it. If you close your eyes, you wouldn't think it would be coming from this. No. No. Absolutely. Like, yeah. So again, super, super great guitar. Um, I think we've covered all the features on this. We may have missed some, but again, all the details are on the Chapman Guitars website. And also, like and subscribe and comment. Get that in. There we go. Well, that was nice, wasn't it? That was a it? lovely, pleasant jam, <laughs> right before the metal one. Yeah. Um, so, now we've got two new guitars. We have the first one, <clears throat> over my end, the M01 Pro X, a very special guitar, as, and, as you can see, <clears throat> and a very cool finish. Morpheus Purple. Actually, is Morpheus Blue or Purple? A lovely Morpheus Purple finish. And Oz, tell me if you're getting this. Oh, it's that way, is it? Maybe, maybe. Yeah, that's better. Lovely. So you can see it kind of changes like those cool TVRs from back in the day. Um, and it, it, even when you're playing it, you can kind of see it change. And it's very psychedelic and um, sounds psychedelic as well. There we go. That was a good ad, wasn't it? Great. So <laughs> at the top of the guitar, <clears throat> we're starting off around the back with uh, some open, open gear hip shot locking tuners um, and some nice steel finished hardware, uh, as well as, you know, matches all of the um, string trees on the top. And then onto the fretboard, <clears throat> we've got some lovely, again, cylindrical, shiny inlays, um, which I really like on these Chapmans. I think they look really smart. Yeah. We've got roasted maple neck again, 
Real nice rolled edges, Macassar ebony fretboard on this. We've also got 22 jumbo stainless steel frets. Um, onto the body, we've got a mahogany body with some nice parchment binding, again with this Morpheus purple top to it. We've got two stacked single coil uh, Seymour Duncan pickups as well as a Trembucker bridge pickup in the back. Um, Wilkinson two point trem, really nice and smooth. Again, you heard it in that jam, well you saw me using it in the jam and you heard it. Um, sounds and feels really, really nice. We've got a five way and let's just hear some sounds actually whilst we're talking about this. Position one, the bridge pickup, the Trembucker in the bridge. I'm not on a massively driven sound here, it's kind of like a blues breaker clean to be honest, but um, got an, enough poke to really drive it if you yeah. dig in. Position two. So that's going to be single coil and single coil in the neck. I can't help but use a whammy bar on those sorts of sounds. It sounds it's, lush though. <laughs> it's hard not to do. Uh, but yeah, sounds sounds great. Middle pickup. So position three. Again, if you dig in, you still get a bit of it, um, but ni nice and clean and compressed feeling. I kind of like that. It's not a bad word. I like the compressed yeah. feel on a clean. <laughs> Position four, everyone's favorite funk thing. Uh, what's very Corey Wongy. Does the job of a position four, yeah. I think. Next single, so um, S Type E. That's a bit more drive for this, I think. Sounds great. Uh, really happy with how it feels. Like, first time playing this one actually for me, right now. Really? Yeah, and uh, again, scale length I kind of get on with because I'm used to that from Chapman's, but um, from my home as the ML1 Pro Traditional from 2017, um, feels feels very similar to that. Again, just with updated features and specs and, and hardware, and obviously a groovy little finish like that. So, um, that's pretty much this guitar. Tell us about the ML3. So I've got its, its brother, I suppose, yeah. in the ML3 Pro X. Um, and to be honest, like this T-type and S-type guitars aren't usually my cup of tea, mm -hmm. but this is wicked. I mean, we've got, I believe, the gold one over yep. there as well. And that one is, that is all of the spice, to be honest with you. Um, but again, spec-wise, these are going to be sitting in similar ballparks. Um, so again, I'm not going to go over too much because, again, we're getting the same hip shot uh, locking tuners, roasted maple neck. Um, ebony fingerboard. Where this guitar does differ slightly, um, the pickups are different on this one. So you've got um, Alnico 2 um, flat top single coils on this one and Alnico 2 Seymour Duncan, Seymour Duncan humbucker in the bridge. Um, again, Wilkinson two point trem, five way switch on this one as well. And it's worth noting when you look at these super close, they do have that metallic shiny. Almost yeah. glitter thing, not too like disco glittery, but yeah. like, they do have, again, it's the metallic finish type thing. So when you see them up close, they do have a bit of a, a presence about them, which is really cool. Yeah, so, fantastic. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to give you some, yeah, I'm going to give you some tones now from it. Um, mine is not quite as expansive as a John's ambient tone, but we'll start, um, I'm going to start on the neck pickup with this one, again, just into a clean channel. So again, it's quite fat that neck sound. Yeah, yeah. It's not necessarily as spanky. Um, again, it's probably worth mentioning mahogany body on these, which you wouldn't traditionally find as I say, is going to darken the sound a little bit. Mm. Um, it's going to position four now, which is everyone's favourite position. Mm. 
that does. is really good. Yeah. yeah, that's really nice. Middle position now. Again, it's just a little bit more mid-rangey and barky. Yeah, but not too overbearing, I don't think. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. And then I really like position two on this one, to be honest with you. It's, to me, it just screams country vibes. <laughs> yeah, Excellent. it's great. <laughs> just the humbucker again, you're gonna find it is quite barky, so. Again, yeah. it's got that real quacky sort of thing to it. Try um, it with a bit of dirt on it. Yeah, Never. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's really, it's a thick sound. I mean, to me, this is an, and again, the same with the ML1, you've got two great Swiss Army knives here. That's true. I think it's probably the most flexible pickup configuration, in my opinion, yeah. I think, HSS. Um, obviously, you don't have a neck humbucker, um, but most of the time, I'm, I and most players would probably gravitate towards a single coil in if the neck. If Malmsteen doesn't need a neck humbucker, you don't. Yeah, I mean, you know, Les Paul still exists. Neck pickups still exist, <laughs> but... Um, for this, yeah, I think it's, it's a great... I, I do great. just want to hear how it handles, if we're talking Swiss Army Knife here. Handles yeah. it pretty well, to be fair. It's nice you know, and aggressive, yeah. If you want to pull that out for Mr. Brightside at your Saturday night gig, perfect. I recommend it, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, these, to be honest with you, this one has caught me by surprise. It's probably one of my favourite ones. Mm. Um, I really dig the ghost frets, but yeah, I think the versatility that the ML3 Pro X has got is wicked, to be yeah, honest yeah. with you. Yeah, it's cool. There's another feature we haven't actually talked about these, these dials. They're also new to the Chapman range. I mm. think they're also really, really nice. They're, uh, they feel great. And I love a good like visual, how loud is my volume pot? Instead mm. of just a chrome, I have no idea how loud this is, um, which is a nice little thing. You if like you're, staring if you're, at your knob. Uh, all the time. Yeah. Uh, if you're a controls player, especially like me, I, I like to know I'm on, I'm on seven out of 10. Um, but yeah. So that pretty much covers it for the, uh, the range of Chapman's here. Obviously, if we've missed anything or you want to have a look at anything further, do head over to the Anathens website. We've also got links below there as well mm -hmm. um, that will take you directly. But yeah, I think we're just going to have a, a bit of a jam out now. Obviously, leave any comments uh, below. Let us know which ones were your favorites, what you liked about them as well. Um, and yeah, be sure to like and subscribe. Hopefully, this is the first of many, many videos yeah, us together. Let's hope and so. Yeah, lots of notes. Let's do all those notes right now. <laughs> cool. Like and subscribe.